Good afternoon, class. I thought this might be a good time to go ahead and record oh, another short uh, lecture. I'll probably shoot for 15, uh, 20 to 30 minutes on this one. Um, so we're picking up on the primary secondary um, uh, handout that uh, I distributed with the last email. And we got down to the end of uh, page eight. And so we're gonna uh, talk through some of these different control modes. Now, this is uh, starting page nine, <clears throat> okay. And the first thing it says, uh, start stop pump control, and it references figure 19, but if you notice, figure 19 is missing because the figure you see is figure 20. Well, I discovered this uh, a number of years ago, and I was able to go dig up over a, out of a, previous version of this, an older version, uh, that had figure 19 in it, and luckily it's the same figure. So this is the figure 19 that uh, is missing from your handout. So uh, you can do a screen capture or you can just study it up here, <clears throat> whatever you need to do. I guess I could email out this little uh, Word file I have with this in there. That's what I'll do, I'll send this to you. So you can have figure 19 as well. But so what this is, is we've got a uh, supply main on the left. We've got a return main on the right. We've got an overhead crossover uh, bridge that the flow <clears throat> is adjusted to 20 GPM. Uh, this is our secondary connection. Again, these two connection points are as close as we can get them. This is the common pipe. <clears throat> and we have a pump up here in our secondary. And again, it's pulling, it's as close to this um, crossover bridge connection as you can get it, because that's our point of no uh, pressure change uh, for the secondary loop. And so we're, and then we're pumping away from that connection in, into the secondary, which is proper. And these are check valves, we have those. Uh, and there's probably balance valves and some other details that aren't shown on here. But at any rate, when uh, the secondary pump is on, it's pumping water through uh, a uh, radiator, some sort of a coil, a heat exchanger. There could be a fan blowing air across this. We really don't know at this point, <clears throat> but it doesn't matter. So when this is on, we supplied uh, 20 GPM uh, to this coil. It comes back around and it uh, enters the crossover bridge, cooled down a little bit, and flows back into the return. So since this is balanced to, the crossover flow is balanced to 20 GPM, and this pump is sized for 20 GPM, when the pump runs, it's gonna take the 20 GPM from the crossover bridge and simply pull it out of the, the crossover uh, up into the secondary, pump it through the secondary circuit, uh, back around, put it back into the crossover bridge, and then it'll flow to the return. And so whatever heat transfer we get out of this um, uh, would be uh, delivered to whatever space is served by this secondary. And the thermostat could uh, kick the pump on and off. You could have a three, two, three, four degree delta T on the controls. And when it gets down to the lower end, it kicks on, space heats up, gets to the top end of the band, kicks off. And that's the way we condition it. <clears throat> Okay, so that's this uh, simple circuit uh, with the pump running. And now we'll go back to this document, which then has figure 20, and which uh, the comment, it's the same as 19, except that the pump's off. So the thermostat satisfied, the pump kicks off, and uh, we have no flow in the secondary and the 20 GPM in the crossover simply bypasses, goes through the common pipe, which is right here, <clears throat> and just goes over to the return. And so we don't really lose maybe a little bit of heat loss through insulation or something, but basically you've got pretty much the same temperature uh, leaving the supply as being dumped into the return. So that's heat that can go on to another zone, perhaps. Well, wow, that's in the return, so I guess that's going back to the boiler, so it can't go to another zone in this arrangement. Sorry. Um, so that's about the end of the discussion on those two, so let's move on down. This is uh, 
similar situation, but now the crossover flow is 10 GPM, but the secondary is a uh, size for 20 GPM of flow. So with that uh, pump is on, this pump is wanting to pump 20 GPM. I've got 10 coming up the crossover, uh, but I need another 10. So what's going to happen is the, the, the 20 on the return side coming out of the secondary is going to come back and hit the crossover. But 10 of it's going to go to the uh, return main and another 10 is going to go back uh, across the common pipe, mix at this T, and then that mixture will be pumped out to the secondary circuit. So you see, this is the, where, where we do a lot of this is in heating. So this may be really hot water. This might be 200, 220, uh, whatever degrees. Uh, we may be coming back out of here at 140, 160. And so then we can mix that, say 160 with this 220, uh, it'd be 50-50, so you can add those together, divide by two, because I got 10 GPM of each. So that would be the, uh, the average temperature of that mixture would then be supplied to the secondary circuit. Again, the pump would be under control of a uh, thermostat. Okay. So this is the same circuit as figure 21, except the pump kicks off. <laughs> and so with the pump off, there's no flow in the secondary and the 10 GPM just goes through the common pipe, bypasses the secondary completely and goes over to the return main. Now what we'll see, and there's, there's more discussion later in this document, but one of the things they bring up, if this coil has access to uh, outside air, it has freeze potential and having a pump that kicks on and kicks off um, is not good in terms of freeze protection because what can happen, a damper can fail open, whatever, and maybe the space is satisfied, but we could uh, somehow be subjecting this coil to uh, freezing temperatures because, and when there's no flow through a coil, it's much more likely to freeze because it's stagnant. If you're just pumping water through there, uh, you stand a much better chance of uh, not having it freeze up. So we don't like to have dead coils uh, full of water when they can potentially uh, get freezing air. Uh, even though maybe they're not supposed to get freezing air, but if there's a duct and dampers, then dampers can fail open and you can freeze a coil, which would be a problem. Okay, okay so this little situation is called uh, an injection pump. And so now the secondary pump runs all of the time. So we're gonna continuously pump the secondary at a rate of 20 GPM. Uh, our crossover bridge flow has been sized to 20 GPM, but now I've got this extra kind of little loop in here and I've got an injection pump in this loop. And so, and it's sized for 20 GPM. So what's gonna happen is when this, let's say now, now the thermostat uh, is gonna control the injection pump. So let's say the space is cold. And so we need some heat. So the injection pump kicks on. So it pulls 20 GPM out of the secondary. I've got 20 GPM coming up into the crossover. And so what's gonna happen, the injection pump uh, the flow from it is going to go into the uh, uh, crossover bridge and go into the return. This 20 GPM of primary water from the supply main will be pulled up into the secondary through this uh, injection line. And then that's the 20 GPM that this continuous pump will push through the secondary, take care of the heating needs and then it'll come back around, be pulled out by this pump and sent back to the return. And so now you, we kind of have two common pipes in this one. We've got a common pipe between this kind of intermediary loop or this injection loop. And we also have the secondary loop. So this is a common pipe for those two loops. And this is a common pipe between the crossover bridge and this injection loop. But 
with all of this balanced 20 GPM up here, 20 GPM here, and 20 GPM here, neither one of these common pipes have any flow. So you can see that this 20 GPM simply goes through this line up here, uh, gets pumped through the secondary, comes back around, back into the crossover bridge, back to the return. Okay, so now this is the same situation, except uh, the injection pump is off. So what's gonna happen is uh, I'm just gonna be recirculating 20 GPM around in a circle in the secondary, uh, which does provide some freeze protection for my coil. Uh, the injection pump is off, so there's no flow in this line. There's no flow in this line. And then the 20 GPM on uh, the crossover bridge circuit just bypasses um, this injection loop and goes right over to, to the return. And again, the injection pump can click on and off uh, to, to keep the space uh, comfortable. All right. Now here is uh, an injection pump that's running, and now we're gonna we're not going to have the same flows uh, in the uh, crossover bridge and in the secondary. So we've got the 20 GPM in the secondary, so we're always circulating 20 GPM through this loop. Um, the crossover bridge flow is 10 GPM, so when the injection pump runs, <coughs> this 10 GPM gets pulled. Uh, through this uh, uh, riser, this injection riser, and comes up to the secondary. Uh, and it mixes with 10 GPM that's coming through this common pipe. And so we get mixing at this T and, and slightly downstream. And then that mixed flow is pumped through the secondary. 20 GPM comes around here. Uh, the injection pump pulls out 10, sends it back into the uh, uh, primary uh, return main down here, and the other 10 goes through the crossover and mixes. That's really, and down here, this common pipe has no flow because all, all of this 10 is going up here. This 10 is coming down here and going back. So there's no flow in that common pipe. Okay. Uh, so this is then the same as uh, figure 25, except the pump is off. And so it's uh, <laughs> pretty simple. Uh, we got 20 GPM just recirculating around and around in a circle in the secondary. And we've got 10 GPM in the crossover that simply bypasses these uh, injection risers and it goes straight into the return. So that uh, should be pretty straightforward. Okay, moving right along. Now we can have modulating uh, three-way control valves. And so we've got a couple of different uh, scenarios here. Uh, let's see, as far as the flows are concerned in uh, figure 27, crossover bridge flow size for 100, secondary flow size for 100. Um, and so the, what happens is determined by this three-way valve. In this condition, uh, the three-way valve has opened its top port and closed uh, this port so that none of this 100 GPM coming into the crossover bridge can flow through the valve. So it has to go up into the secondary circuit. Uh, and likewise, um, this port is wide open and if I'm pulling 100 GPM up here, that's it, I don't need, you know, there's no reason for a common pipe flow. So this flow is zero. This flow is zero because the valve shut off. This flow is zero because the 100 GPM is coming from the crossover into the secondary. So that heating water circulated through the coil comes back down and exits through this open port, wide open on the three-way valve, which then feeds into the uh, return main. Okay. Uh, next situation, uh, that, uh, <laughs> that three-way control valve could be modulated to 50% of the flow uh, going through the bypass and the other 50% or 50 GPM, uh, either way, uh, is going vertically up into the secondary. So this 100 splits, I get 50 going through the injection riser and 50 going through the uh, bypass. So this 50 then uh, comes up to this T. Uh, this pump uh, wants 100, 
And so the only way I can get 100 is to pull 50 through the common pipe uh, of the return water. So they mix right here, 50-50 proportions in this example. Uh, so we temper this hot heating water before we pump it through the coil. Uh, 100 GPM comes back around 50 splits and goes out uh, through this port on the three-way valve and the other 50 goes through the common pipe to mix again. Okay, so you can look at that. Uh, let's see. So now we're gonna uh, just vary the proportions. Now the crossover bridge flow, say we made it hotter so we don't need to uh, <clears throat> transport as much uh, flow in order to get the same uh, heating content perhaps. Uh, but anyway, this crossover bridge is sized for 50, but our secondary is still going to pump 100. So uh, the, if the three-way valve has shut this port, then I can have no flow through my uh, bypass. So my 50 has to go uh, up into the secondary through the uh, bleed riser. Uh, again, this is pumping 100. So it has to mix right here. So we temper that, we uh, cool it down a little bit and we pump it through the heat exchanger, come back around, uh, got 100 coming around, 50 exits through the three-way valve and the other 50 goes through the common pipe to mix again. Okay. Uh, same as the previous, except now this uh, three-way valve is modulated to 50% bypass. So but my crossover bridge flow is only uh, 50 GPM, so I've got 25 GPM passing on through the valve to the return main. The other 25 coming up here uh, through the bleed riser. So now I have to recirculate 75 uh, GPM of return water to mix with the 25 GPM. So now I have made this water cooler by the action of this valve. And so you see, I can have, I can do, uh, I can measure outside air temperature and reset this valve position based on outside air temperature to adjust the temperature of water going through my coil over here. That might be, you know, a good way to control the amount of heat that is uh, discharged from the coil into, into the space. So that's a possibility. Okay. Now we're going to uh, do a little bit on uh, two-way modulating control valves. <coughs> uh, let's see. And so we've got 20 GPM uh, coming into the crossover bridge. Um, I've got 100 GPM uh, being recirculated. And so if this valve is open, then I'll have 20 GPM exiting uh, into the return main. And so that 20 GPM will be made up for the crossover bridge water, but I'll have to have 80 GPM going through um, the, uh, the, this line, this bypass flow. Uh, and notice, we'll talk more about this, but in order to make this work, um, we have to have a balancing valve up here in the secondary. And that makes the common pipe, uh, in this case, move down to the crossover bridge. We'll talk more about that uh, later. But that's when we implement the uh, 20, uh, the two-way valve uh, condition. Uh, this is uh, typically the way the piping arrangement goes. Okay, and then, um, so, this valve, it could be a two position valve. This could be a two position valve that's snapping open shut, or it could be a modulating. If it's a modulating type valve, then it could go to allow 10 GPM, in which case I'd have 10 bled out here. Uh, of my 20 comes up here, 10 would bypass through the common pipe and mix with this return water, go in, uh, return water from the secondary and we send that mixture into the return main. This 10 GPM goes up to the secondary, mixes with 90 GPM through this bypass, and that 100 GPM then goes through my heat exchanger. Pretty interesting, okay? 
And this is uh, what can happen with the uh, this uh, two-way valve completely shut. Uh, obviously, if it shuts, then we won't get any flow from the crossover up into the secondary. So no flow here means no flow over here. And so my 100 GPM just circulates around in a circle. Again, perhaps freeze protection. And my 20 GPM goes through the crossover bridge back into the return. Okay, um, that's enough uh, for right now. Where are we now? We're, uh, we're on page 13. We're, uh, we're down to this uh, uh, 0.8. And we'll come back here and I'll do another, I don't know, 20 to 30 minute video try to chop these up into maybe a little bit smaller pieces for you. That might help. So that's it for now. I'll get this emailed out to you and uh, I'll be back shortly. Oh, also, uh, I will include this email. We'll have some information about this big homework uh, problem that I've sent you, some other files to help uh, assist you with that.